Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. This show is brought to you by Audible. They are the leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. You know I'm a huge Audible fan because you can listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Whether you're at the beach, the gym, or stuck in traffic, there's nothing quite like Audible. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz and sign up today. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1230 WBZT. In this economy, you either have skills or you don't. And if you don't have skills and you don't have contacts, then you wind up moving furniture for a living. And I know this after this past weekend because I saw it firsthand. Here to talk about it is Charles Hughes Smith. Charles, welcome back to the Financial Survival Network. Thank you, Kerry. Glad to be here. So so what I'm talking about, what I kind of experienced this weekend is kind of what you've been writing about lately, isn't it? Yes. And yeah, just to recount, so I line up the Russian mafia Israeli uh, movers, and of course, they stand me up. So then I go for the U-Haul, and I line up the, uh, the illegal alien movers, uh, and they didn't stand me up. They get they wind up being an hour and a half late, but they show up, so I'm grateful. And nicest guys, but basically they have no skills, so they're moving furniture for a living, and that's kind of what we come down to here, right? Yes. And as we uh, both know and we've talked about on previous shows, the uh, the new economy, or what I call the emerging economy, it is dependent more and more on what I call, and other people call, human capital and social capital. In other words, if you don't have skills and, and connections and networks, um, it's very difficult to earn a living. Ain't that the truth. And yeah, I look at these guys. They were really working hard, physically working harder than I ever do, and not getting a big return on their investment. And you know, not having a lot of options on on how to make income. Yeah, and we were, uh, before we started the show, we were talking about uh, um, a commentary you wrote a couple of weeks ago on the, the gross, absolute, catastrophic failure of the higher education system uh, to prepare students for the real economy. And it really struck a nerve with me because uh, last year I wrote this piece called The Nearly Free University in which I propose that we basically get rid of um, this, uh, the whole college system as it stands now and, and go to an online, more informal way of, of learning what you need to learn without paying somebody 100000 bucks for a worthless degree. Ain't that the truth? I mean, a hundred grand, you could start a couple businesses for that and fail and you'd learn more from starting those businesses than you would ever learn from uh, from those colleges. Because look, I mean, I went to school and that was a long time ago, but for the first two years, basically all I did was party. I wasn't a real regular attendee at several of those classes that I thought had little or no value. And it wasn't till I went to night school where there were other serious students who really needed that degree to get higher income and a path to a better life that I really figured out that there was something to be had at college. Yeah. And, uh, bef- you know, I think uh, before the show, you were telling me about a course you took online uh, yourself that, that had a huge uh, leveraging effect. And I think that's a great example of, of the future of education, which is to learn what you need to learn to, to make more money or become uh more skilled or get more connections and, and forget the 3.9 years of, of watching lectures that you could watch online. Oh, yeah, yeah. The whole thing is called podcasting A to Z, which taught me every aspect of internet radio from how you record it, how you set up your computer, how you let the world know that you've recorded something, and 
and how to get good quality, how to edit, and all sorts of different things required. And you know what the amazing thing was, Charles? If I wanted to pay a college out there $100,000 to teach me those skills, I couldn't. If I wanted to find any college out there teaching these skills, didn't exist. None of them were doing it. The closest I could find is the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, which could teach me a few of those skills, but nothing for the $800 that I eventually paid this guy, Cliff Ravenscraft, at the, uh, he's the podcastanswerman.com. And if you ever, if you're interested in learning how to do this, you can actually make some money at it. I wouldn't say I'm ready to retire quite yet, Charles, but you can actually earn a living at this and you can actually um, create a career here. And for $1,000, $800,000, you can actually actually do something here that uh, college for many times that you won't be able to do. Yeah, and I think that we were, uh, it, it ties into a theme of, um, that we were discussing before the show as well, which is uh, diminishing opportunity and the rising costs of education. And so there's, uh, you know, it's like every the students today are being crunched. You know, they're they're um, being burdened with these enormous uh, costs uh, and student loans for less and less return. And um, you know, Carrie, I read a piece from. Um, I think it was an interview of the head of uh, human resources for Google in the New York Times. And he said, you know, we don't even um, ask people anymore for their GPAs and, and um, how they did in, in uh, college because we found that there's no connection between how they did in college and, whether, and how good a worker they are. Zero. And they did this massive data crunching on all their thousands of employees. I mean, and so that's a staggering um, indictment of the higher education system. Just because you get good grades in college doesn't mean that you're an effective, useful worker. That is remarkable because everything in college is geared to that GPA and everything in high school is geared at getting high grades to get into that great college to get that great GPA, to get that great job. And now you find out Google tells you, and believe me, if Google says it, I believe that it's true because they are the number crunchers. They are the ones that know how to correlate that data. So if there's no point in getting that grade, then what the heck are you doing with the four years of your life? Yeah, and it uh, it does call into question the whole the whole point of a degree. And then um, the other interesting thing the guy said was that 15% of Google employees don't even have a college degree. And there, and that the number of people that work for Google that don't have a college degree is rising. Wow. So what, what they're obviously what they're hiring is they they want like uh, go getters, self starters, people who go out there and learn how to do stuff on their own. And um, really there's no other way to learn, you know, like it's kind of like how much, you know, do you learn about cooking by watching, uh, you know, a hundred hours of, of um, cooking shows on TV? You, you really learn nothing. I could teach you more in, in 20 minutes in the kitchen than you'll ever learn by watching a hundred hours of cooking shows. Yeah, you could probably learn more at McDonald's flipping, <laughs> flipping burgers than you could uh, watching Giada. Although, I have to be fair here. My daughter knew absolutely nothing about cooking. Um, and she started watching the Food Channel. Now, she didn't learn anything about cooking from it, but it sparked her interest. And from there, she started trying to cook. And on her own, you know, she got some cookbooks, and she said, well, you know, I can actually measure ingredients, and I can mix them, and I can follow directions. And she get, became a pretty fair chef. So from that standpoint of spurring interest, sparking curiosity, it's a great thing. But from the standpoint of actually teaching you, you can't learn passively. The only way you can learn is by doing. I think that's the point there, right? Yeah. And I think that your point about being inspired and kind of learning the basics by watching is, is also valid. And I think that's where these, uh, they call them MOOCs, like M-O-O-C, which represents uh, massively open online courses. 
This is where you basically take the best college lecturers and then they put their lecture online and then 40,000 people or 400,000 people can all watch the same lecture. And so you don't need um, 99% of the mediocre lecturers out there <clears throat> because everyone can watch the best lecturers and, and, and learn the basics from um, the best lecturers out there online for basically nothing. That is such a great point. And, and what the value of a degree really goes down to nothing in that point because your GPA doesn't matter as Google has established. And let's face it, Google's got hundreds of thousands of people working for them. So they know just from their own gene pool, if, if GPA mattered, they would have figured it out, certainly. Yes. And so it suggests to me that um, learning to excel in the higher education model, you know, which I call the factory model because students are basically like, you know, they're like machined parts going down the assembly line that you assemble your 30 credits by sitting in a chair for, you know, uh, uh, for four years. And then you're um, stamped, you know, at the end of the process, you're stamped with a d diploma. But um, excelling in that uh system doesn't mean that you'll excel in the actual, you know, the new economy. And that's where I think higher education is really failing. I mean, it's completely out of touch with the real economy. And, you know, I, I mean, Carrie, let's say that uh, you and I, our businesses were growing to such a degree that we needed to hire uh, someone to help us. Would we be looking at someone with a college degree and, and a GPA or would we be looking at what they actually know how to do in the real world? That is a great point, Charles. And We'll talk more about that up next. Hi, this is Kerry Lutz of the Financial Survival Network. These are trying times. The most important issue you face today is how to stay free in a world that's becoming less free by the day. Join myself, Mickey Fulp, Robert Ian, David Morgan, and 12 others at the Liberty Mastermind Symposium in Dallas on June 28th, 29th, and learn how to create your personal roadmap to staying free. Don't miss it. Join us and register now at libertymastermind.us. Sign in at libertymastermind.us. And we are back with Charles Hugh Smith. And Charles, so what about this concept here of the of the sheepskin, which is no longer printed on sheepskin? You get this thing after four years. Honestly, I don't even know where mine is. I lost it so many years ago. I don't even have my law school degree. I don't have my uh, my bar admission certificate. I haven't had them. They mean nothing to me. Uh, I feel like my creativity can't be measured by those certificates and my proudest accomplishments in life and probably your proudest achievements have absolutely nothing to do with those artificial degrees in your life. Your greatest accomplishments have come from your greatest creative acts in your life, right? Right. And uh, I think that we... Um I think we can sort of uh, summarize or characterize the new economy as one in which what's important is what you can do in the real world, not how many credentials you've assembled. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of people are still uh, back in the old mindset where the more credentials and degrees you acquire, then the, that means automatically the uh, higher your skill level and the more people will want to hire you. But in actual fact, that's just not the case. Um, what, what people want is real world skills. And if those aren't being taught, then you've got to learn them on your own. Right. And for you, okay, I don't know how many careers you've had in your life, but you've had a few, right? Yeah, I think about seven. It's hard to, you know, <laughs> that's how I kind of count them. And the career you're doing now, I presume, is the most satisfying you've had, right? Yes. And why is that? I think it uh, it combines uh, a lot of my interests and, and skills, and um, I control it. In other words, I'm self-employed, and, and uh, so my relative success or failure is, is within my power and control, more or less. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would venture to say you've gotten the most self-esteem, if that's not a bad word in this day and age, because it's so abused, from your current career as well, correct? Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. Because you've, you know, your, your identity is your own. You're not just a, a cog in somebody else's machine. You define yourself by what you're doing in the, in the real world. And I'm being a, like a little unfair to you here because I'm kind of reflecting my experience, what I'm doing now off of you as well. <laughs> well, I think I think we've similarly uh, carved out uh, a niche in the alternative media, and there are no rules for this, really. I mean, you can't go get a master's degree in alternative media, uh, and so and if you did, it would be worthless. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it would be it would be worth it would be less than worthless because you would have paid money to get a degree in something that you didn't need in the first place to do what you're doing. That's the best part of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I think, um, I think we also, uh, we are in a fast moving, flexible uh, sort of uh, economy and, and sector. And so really like being flexible and, and looking for opportunities and taking them and trying stuff out. These are like the, um, the skill sets that, that pay off in, in our jobs. I mean, don't you think? Absolutely. You know, the best thing is that, you started it from nothing. It was nothing before you, you came up with a concept and you build it. And then you reach a level, you kind of get a little, I wouldn't say bored, but you reach a level where you know you need to grow some more. You need to become more than you are right now. You need to create more and then you do it and you keep growing. And there's nothing, there's no job that you could ever take on there's no, there's nothing you could do that would ever enable you to do that. There's no career that you could have done. That's why what you're doing now is so great. Yes. And I think that we're, um, we're, we're sort of living examples. I'm not trying to pat ourselves on the back. I mean, there's millions of other people um, who are doing uh, their own thing and, and creating value and new enterprises. So we're just, we're just a two of, of millions, but everybody that's out there, trying stuff out, I think that there, um, the characteristics that we all share is we're continuing to learn and continuing to make connections to other smart people. And, and that's what's helping us grow our business. You know, it's like we're getting advice and commentary and help from other smart people. And we're constantly learning more and more. And I think those are the characteristics that um, you need to have. Great point. And on that note, Charles, well, we're going to have to, uh, end right now but we will continue down this uh, journey that this voyage that we've both undertaken and like we're doing this liberty mastermind uh, having a lot of other people uh, who are doing similar things as well this uh, this thursday actually friday in and saturday in uh, in dallas we plan to have another one uh, probably in six months and hopefully we'll have you there as well libertymastermind.us it's going to be a great time and charles uh yeah we're kindred souls kind of doing the same things you got to keep working on those skills you got to keep refining them it, there's really no substitute because if you don't do it then you're going to be moving furniture and if you can't move furniture then i don't know what you're going to do well said carrie thank you very much hey thank you it's a pleasure and uh Hey, your website again? Uh, uh, it's uh, of two minds dot com. And your books, uh, books are available there. What's your latest book? Uh, latest book is uh, why things are falling apart and what we can do about it. All right, and then don't forget financial survival network dot com. Sign up for the newsletter. Gr a lot of great information. I don't know that I'm going to get it out this week because I've been so busy with the move and all the accompanying disasters that have occurred. So we'll talk to you again soon, Charles. Be well. Okay, thank you. The show is brought to you by Audible. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Would you believe they've got over 100,000 titles in virtually every genre you can think of? And don't forget, you'll get a free audiobook and 30-day trial just for signing up today at audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz. That's audiblepodcast.com slash L-U-T-Z. The Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at financialsurvivalnetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network.